Welcome to our lecture online. To understand the de Broglie wave concept a little bit better, let's do some examples. For example, we have an electron that's moving at 1% the speed of light, and we're wondering what is the wavelength of that electron as it's moving. And then, should that same principle of particles acting like waves apply to a basketball moving, let's say, at 10 meters per second? And you'll see that, yes, in theory, it should affect both types of particles, small ones as well as large ones, but the effect may not be noticeable very large particles, so that this is really only an aspect of the very small world, the world of quantum mechanics. So let's see here, what is the wavelength of an electron moving at 1% the speed of light? Well, we know that the equation says that lambda is equal to h divided by the momentum, or h divided by the mass times velocity. Now in this case, we do not need to worry about relativistic effects because the velocity is only 1% the speed of light. The relativistic effects really don't come into play until the velocity reaches about 10% the speed of light, and even then the difference between taking it into account and not taking it into account is about 1% in the final value. So you say, well, if it's less than 10%, let's not worry about it too much especially at 1%, it's almost negligible. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, divided by the mass. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And the velocity, we said, was 3 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And it turns out, when you work out the units, you will indeed get meters for wavelength. Using a calculator, we get 6.626 e to the 34 minus, divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus, and divide by 3 e to the 6th, and we get a wavelength of 2.42, 2.42 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Now, even though that is a very small wavelength, that is actually a wavelength that can be measurable. We can actually work with that. Remember that the size of a hydrogen atom, which would then indicate the Bohr radius, so if we take a single proton and a single electron zipping around the nucleus, this is of course hydrogen, a hydrogen atom, the Bohr radius, R, is equal to 0.53 angstroms, which means that the radius is equal to 0.53 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. So notice that 2.42 times 10 to the minus 10 is approximately equal to the circumference of the orbit of the electron in the hydrogen atom, which means that it's probably reasonable to say that the electron moves approximately at 1% of the speed of light in the hydrogen atom. There's definitely a relationship there, and we can then see that, yes, these are reasonable numbers, and these are the kind of things that we experience in the real world. We then realize that, of course, the electron will move like a wave as it goes around the nucleus, as it zips around the nucleus at a tremendous number of times per second. Now, let's see if this applies to basketballs. Again, we'll use the same equation. We can say that lambda, the wavelength of a basketball, is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum, which is equal to h divided by mv. I'm not quite sure what the mass of a basketball is, but I guess that 0.2 kilograms, so let's see what the wavelength will be. This is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by 0.2 kilograms and the velocity of 10 meters per second. And let's see what that gives us. So let's see here, 0.2 times 10, that's, that's 2. This divided by 2, we don't even need a calculator. This would be equal to 3.313 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. Now notice the size of that wavelength. There is no way possible that we could ever measure a wavelength that small. Notice that the diameter of a nucleus is somewhere in the order of 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters for a small nucleus. And so look how much smaller it is than the diameter of a nucleus. There's no way anyone could ever measure the wavelength of a basketball moving. But in other words, 
in the macro world, in normal objects, in normal world that we live in, we will never notice this particular concept that particles have waves, act like waves as they move at very high velocities. So we can only see that in the quantum world, never in the macro world. And that's how that works for the de Broglie waves.